जय हिंद क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ द बायोलॉजी दैट इज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज वी हैव डन अबाउट द नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज इन क्लास नाइन्थ एज वेल दैट व्हाट आर द नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज सो द रिसोर्सेज व्हिच वी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द नेचर व्हिच आर नॉट बीइंग मेड बाय द मैन सो दोस पर्टिकुलर रिसोर्सेज व्हिच वी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द नेचर दे आर नोन एज नेचुरल resources so if we talk about natural resources they we can obtain them from air from water soil mineral forest etc and on the basis of this we are having two type of resources which we have also done in class 9th as well as in um, we, we must have done it in the chapter sources of energy as well renewable and non renewable resources so if we are going to talk about renewable natural resource which can be renewed which can be replenished in a shorter period of time for example air water sunlight forest etc and the second classification of renew of uh, the resources are non renewable natural resource so the non renewable natural resource are the resources which can be replenished in a shorter uh, they, uh, with, they they cannot be replenished we cannot actually replenish them in a shorter period of time so we need to use them in a very very effective manner we cannot we cannot use them like that we need to think before using them because it take million of years to be formed and as we all know that uh, we are using lots and lots of packaging material and there are lots of activities due to which lot of waste material they are being produced and those particular waste material they are being thrown away in the environment they may go to the nearby water bodies they are dumped in an open ground so all these kind of uh, we can say waste material they generate lots of kind of pollution it might be air pollution water pollution soil pollution etc so in order to this various steps they are being taken by the government year after year so one such plan it was being this program it was being launched by rajiv gandhi in 1986 to order the uh, to or uh, in order to reduce the pollution of river ganga so if you going to uh, if you going to look that what are the different kind of waste which are being uh, loaded into the river we are having human waste for example domestic waste like uh, laundry public uh, public waste etc then we are having industrial waste dumping of untreated waste into the river we are having uh, various kind of religious activities and even they are also being done in the being performed in the river ganga so these are the various kind of uh, various kind of activities due to various kind of waste they are being dumped into the river ganga so in order to reduce the pollution of river ganga this particular program it was being launched in the year 1986 and the name of the plan is ganga action plan and the basic objective is to reduce the uh, pollution of river ganga so the, these are the examples of the various natural resources we can just go through this particular slide we are having water fossil fuel mineral uh, we can say air sunlight everything so whatever we are using everything is being given by the nature and it actually depend on us how we are using it if we going to use it uh, thinking about the future generation thinking in a sustainable manner we can actually preserve them from our future generation also so the next question comes that why do we need to manage it it is the same thing why do we need to manage it and what are the various uh, we can say strategies uh, which we can actually implement so we are having 3 hours to save the environment we are having reduce recycle and reuse that we have done in our junior class as well reduce uh, reduce as we all know it is uh, using or uh, less of natural resource and avoiding the wastage of natural resource next is recycle recycle means the material like paper plastic glass we actually use for making things which can be used again used for making new things instead of synthesizing or extracting new paper plastic glass or metals we are using the same thing and we are making something from these particular things which we can use again reuse that you must have seen in your home also that means using things again and again it might be like plastic bottles in which we buy jams pickles etc we are actually reusing them again and again 
Now children, out of these three R strategies, that is reduce, recycle and reuse. Now reduce, we are not using any energy. In reuse also, we are not using any energy. In the recycle, some amount of energy is invested whenever we are making something new. So we can say out of the three R's, recycle is the only R which requires little bit of energy. Rest of the two R, that is reduce and recycle, they are much better as compared to recycle. Now the next is what is the need for the management of natural resources. The first thing is that equitable distribution of resources. That means these resources they are available to each and every section of the society. It is nothing like this that these particular resources are available only to the handful of the rich people or to the powerful people because power and money they are the two forces which work against the equitable distribution of resources. So we should use them in such a manner that they are not only fulfilling the need of the present generation but they are also fulfilling the need. We are actually conserving them, we are actually preserving them for our future generation. Long term planning for the use of natural resources so that it lasts not only for the present but also for the future generation. In a way we are talking about sustainable management of resources. The exploitation of natural resources, it should not be for the benefit of few people, but it should be distributed equally for all. And while extracting, when we are extracting these natural resources, we should also plan for the safe disposal of the waste. It should not be something like this that we are extracting them and a lot of pollution is being caused. So there is no way that we can actually, we are actually using these natural resources but in a way we are also causing pollution to the environment, to the soil, to the water, to the air. So this is the most important thing that while we are extracting them we should also, we should also have a plan by which we can dispose them safely. So this is the need so that they are actually available to all the sections of society and whenever we are actually using them, we should use them in a way that we are also conserving and preserving them for the, new, uh, for the future generation. So we, in a way we are talking about sustainable management of resources. Okay, now when we are going to talk about the natural resource in this particular chapter, we are going to talk about only three things. That is forest, this is the first natural resource, the second would be water and the third would be fossil fuel. Now we must have done about forest in geography as well as in any other subject as well. Why do we require forest? What is the importance of forest? They help to preserve biodiversity. They are a kind of habitat for uh, animals, for the many tribal people who are living in and around the forest. They help to maintain ecological balance, various cycle, biogeochemical cycle, whether we are talking about water cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, all the cycle they are actually dependent on forest. They also help to maintain the oxygen and carbon dioxide balance in the nature because we all are aware that the trees they play an essential role because for by the photosynthesis they release oxygen and they also absorb the CO2 for the process of photosynthesis. So and they also help to prevent soil erosion and they also control flood. Now the next is stakeholder. What do we understand by the term related to stakeholder? Stakeholder in any organization, they are the people who are directly or indirectly, they are involved in the management of the organization. For example, in case of school, so who all are the stakeholder? The stakeholder would be the management, principal, teacher, student, parent and all the employees who are being employed in the school. In the same way, in case of forest, we are having majorly four stakeholder, the people who are living in and around the forest. Then we are having the forest department, uh, then we are having the wildlife and nature lover and at the last we are having the industrialist. So these are the four, or four stakeholders in case of forest. Now uh, how do, what is the role of the uh, local people, what, they are, what are the benefits they are getting from the forest. So the local people they are getting the many many things from the forest, they, can, uh, they actually depend on the forest for their livelihood. And they can collect, uh, we can say, nut, medicine, their food from the forest also. Forest is a kind of home from them. 
then we are having industrialists actually for the industrialists the whatever product they are obtaining from the forest they act as a raw material for their industries then we are having the forest department of the government they actually own the forest and they control whatever resources they are getting from the forest and in the last we are having the nature and the wildlife organization who want to conserve and preserve the forest now out of these four stakeholder the most important stakeholder would be the local people because in any natural resource whether it is water forest or anything until and unless local people are not taken into uh, consideration their choice their judgment is not taken into consideration we cannot conserve any kind of natural resource this is the bottom line of this chapter that whenever we need we want to manage any natural resource if we are making a uh, number of plants it might be made by government by this industry or that particular person but until and unless we are not taking into consideration local people that what kind of climatic condition are present in that forest uh, the local people they are the people who are living in that forest for hundreds and hundreds of years they are actually aware so the local people are the most important stakeholder because forest it's a kind of home from them they are getting food from the forest uh, they actually know in and out of the forest so they will not do anything which might destroy the forest now conservation of forest what are the various plans what are the various measures by which we can conserve the forest so we are having afforestation that is planting of more trees by preventing or reducing deforestation by preventing overgrazing by the cattle by setting up wildlife sanctuaries national park biosphere reserve so all these particular thing we have done in class 8 also undertaking various program like one mahotsav chipko movement etc that means by spreading awareness among the common people among the masses as well as in the uh, in the upcoming future generation that means all these particular programs can also be celebrated in various schools so everyone is aware that we need to conserve the forest now there is one particular andolan that is chipko andolan or hug the tree movement now this particular movement it was being started in the early 1970 in the uh, we can say in the there was one village in the rani village of the garhwal district now in what happened in this particular village there was a dispute between the logging contractor and the and the, we can say the villagers the logging contractor he want to cut the trees because he want to use that particular tree uh, for his own benefit but the local people they were actually against it so what happened once when the logging or when the man folk of the village they went outside to earn their livelihood so the logging contractor workers they come so what happened the women of that particular village they came and they actually they Uh, they hug the trees they hug the they clasp the trunk of the tree and they say that you cannot cut the tree if you want to cut the tree you want you have to cut us first so this particular movement that's why we called it as chipko andolan or hug the tree movement because the women they hug the tree and they say you cannot cut the tree slowly and steadily this particular movement it spread across the area and we call it as hug the tree movement or the chipko andolan movement so apart from that there are many and many examples which we are going to study in this chapter which actually prove only one point that it only the manage it the any particular natural resource whether it is forest or uh, we can say water it can only be managed in a effective manner uh, by the local people now the next is we are talking about wildlife what is the importance of wildlife because it helps to preserve biodiversity it helps to maintain food chain and food web we get a useful product like uh, we can say food medicine leather bones honey etc and uh, how can we conserve the wildlife by preserving the natural habitat of the animal by protecting the endangered species of animal by setting up wildlife sanctuaries national park biosphere reserve etc and children one thing we should take into consideration that everything cannot be done by the government it is only you and we who can actually work we can join hand to hand for the conservation of anything whether it is forest or it is wildlife now the second natural resource which we are going to talk about that is water 
Now, first of all, we are going to talk about uses of water. We all are aware. How do we use water? It is a basic necessity for all the living things. We use water for daily needs, for agriculture, transportation, construction of building. It is a natural habitat for all the aquatic organism and human activities. Number of human activities. It might be uh, industrial waste. It might be any kind of activity. They are affecting the availability of water, and they are also causing pollution to the water bodies. Now we must have also studied about dams. Why do we build the dams? You must have done it in class ninth as well as in class eight, and you must have done it in geography as well. So what are the advantages of dam? They actually help in the irrigation of crop, in the produce, uh, in production of electricity. With the help of the dams, we can supply water to the towns and cities, and they also play an important role in control of to control floods. So these are the advantages. But what are the disadvantages? For example, whenever we are going to build dam on a large scale, the first of all thing, the first problem is the social problem, because it displaces a large number of local people who are actually living in that particular area. The second thing is that economic problem. A lot of public money is is actually invested in this particular thing. So this is the particular problem, and the and the major problem is that a lot of money is being invested, but everyone is not getting benefit. It had been observed that the people who live in an area which is near to the dam, they grow crop which require lots of water, and the people who are living in an area which is far off from the dam, they are not getting appropriate amount of water. The third is environmental problem because whenever we are going to build dam, it causes deforestation and the loss of diversity. So this is the disadvantages of dam. So whenever we are going to build dam, or whenever we are going to implement any mega project, the thing is that we shall take into consideration the need of the local people. Whenever we are forming any committee, any particular person from the local area should also be taken into consideration. They they should be a member of that particular committee. Otherwise, any mega project, whether it is dam or anything, there is no use. So these are the pictures of the dam. You can just look at the pictures. <clears throat> so after that, so now the dam it is a particular mega project. Apart from that, before independence, the water as a resource was it was into the hands of the local people. Actually, local people they uh, have done lot and lot of thing by which they can conserve and preserve the water. So water harvesting or rainwater harvesting. As we all know, it is the collecting and storing rainwater for future use. And the common methods are digging pits, pond, lake, etc., building small earthen dams or concrete check dams, construction of dikes, reservoir, and construction of rooftop collecting units in houses. So these are the various kind of we can say local things which are being built by the local people because they are aware the where they can collect the rainwater, how they can use them. And what are the advantages of this particular water, which is present in the underground? The first advantage is that it won't evaporate; it would spread out and it would recharge the well. It provides moisture. It does not get polluted easily. And the most important thing is that it does not provide breeding ground for mosquitoes and housefly. So water harvesting is just collecting and storing rainwater for our own benefit, uh, for the future use by the local people. And these are the advantages of the. ground uh, ground water so these are the different methods of water harvesting you can see in different regions these water harvesting structure are known by different names they are being called khadans we can also call them as um, khadans then we are having tanks nadi stal surangma different names as in different region as per the requirement of the people so these particular different water harvesting structure they are being built by local people taking into consideration their need and what do they require from the water and how do they want to store it so that's why water harvesting structure we need to revive them again uh, now this is a particular rain water harvesting which they have shown that how we can do the rain water harvesting if you can look at the diagram it had been shown that we are having a metal tile or plastic roof we are have water is being there then we are having some uh, filter unit are also being uh, we can say inserted and we are having a roof catchment and the rain water goes down and then it is being captured in the it 
slowly seeps into the ground. Now children, the last particular natural resource which we are going to study in this chapter that is coal and petroleum. Now coal and petroleum we have done in the chapter sources of energy also as fossil fuel. As we all are aware that they are the fossil fuel which are being formed by the decomposition of dead plant and animal inside the earth after several million of years. These are non-renewable resource of energy. We cannot renew them. That is why whenever we are using them, we should use them in a very very judicious manner. We cannot use them like this. Because petroleum reserve may last for about 40 years and coal reserve it may last for about 200 years. So if you want to use them like this, it might be possible that our future generation, our children or the grandchildren will not be able to use it as a fuel. Now coal and petroleum it contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur and when we are actually going to burn them so they release lot and lot of gases which is harmful for the environment. They release carbon dioxide, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur and as we all are aware carbon dioxide it is an example of a greenhouse gas which causes global warming. And oxides of nitrogen and sulfur they may combine with the moisture in the air and produces and it actually leads to acid. Rain. So this is they have just shown an example, you have done it in class 8 also, how, what is an acid rain, how is it being formed, the oxides of sulfur and nitrogen when they combine with the moisture present in the upper atmosphere. So this is how acid rain is being formed. So what are the ill effects of global warming, melting of polar, uh, polar ice, rise in the sea level, so it might lead to flood also, the, glow, the temperature is also increasing day by day. So the rise in sea level, melting of polar ice. So this is about the chapter. In this particular chapter, we had studied about the three kind of natural resource that is forest, water and fossil fuel. And we have also studied about how we can actually preserve and conserve them for our future generation. Thank you class.